Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the National Press Theater. My name is Janice Dixon, and I'm going to be moderating this press conference. We're joined today by Kathy Fox, uh, the chair of the Transportation Safety Board, and to her right, Natasha Von Themt, uh, the director of Investigations Air. They're going to make some comments in both uh, French. Do you, are you okay in the back? Okay, sorry, I thought you had your hands up. They're going to make some questions in French and English and then um, take questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon and thank you very much for coming today. Early on January 8, 2020, Ukrainian International Airlines Flight 752 crashed shortly after taking off from the International Airport in Tehran, taking the lives of all 176 people on board. For their families and loved ones, the world changed overnight. And then, over the weekend, their world changed again when the government of the Islamic Republic of Iran acknowledged that its own military was responsible for accidentally firing missiles and downing the aircraft. The Transportation Safety Board of Canada, the TSB, extends its deepest condolences to the families and loved ones of the people who perished in this tragedy. We have been in direct contact with the Aircraft Accident Investigation Bureau, or AAIB, of the Islamic Republic of Iran since shortly after we learned of the accident. As announced last Thursday, and given the high number of Canadian fatalities, we have confirmed our role as an expert and accepted Iran's invitation to attend the accident site as entitled in Annex 13 to the Convention on International Civil Aviation. Two TSB air accident investigators left Canada on Friday evening and over the weekend met up with members of the Canadian consular team in Turkey. They have since obtained visas to travel to Iran and departed earlier today for Tehran, along with members of Canada's consular team. In addition, the TSB will also deploy a second team of investigators with expertise in aircraft recorder download and analysis once we confirm where and when this activity will take place. Now, this is not the first time that we've sent investigators overseas. The TSB is seen as a world leader, and we've participated in foreign investigations for close to 30 years. In this investigation, and I want to be clear about this, we do not yet fully know what the scope of our role will be. However, I also want to stress that so far, the Iranian AAIB has responded in compliance with international protocols. And furthermore, there have been early signs that Iran is allowing the TSB to play a more active role than normally permitted. For example, by inviting TSB investigators to participate in the download and analysis of the cockpit voice and flight data recorders. Again, whenever and wherever that takes place. Now, after every accident, there are many questions. Everyone wants to know what happened? Well, we know that. Everyone also wants to know how or why did this happen? And we have certainly heard the many questions being asked in the wake of these tragedy, this tragedy, and we have the same questions. It has already been reported that our role is quite limited by Annex 13 of the Convention on International Civil Aviation. As the state of occurrence, the Islamic Republic of Iran, and specifically its Aircraft Accident Investigation Bureau, or AAIB, has the right to lead the investigation. The roles of other states with a special interest are also similarly prescribed. As the lead investigation agency, the Iranian AAIB is also responsible for communicating information about the progress and the results of the investigation, and we are bound to and will respect that. In this case, especially because 57 of the passengers on the aircraft were Canadian, it is our hope that the TSB will be allowed to bring more of its expertise to a thorough and transparent investigation. 
as an independent accident investigation agency, we will also collaborate with other international investigation authorities with whom we have long-standing and well-developed uh, relationships, including those from France, Sweden, the United Kingdom, the United States, as well as Ukraine. The purpose of an Annex 13 safety investigation is to find all causal and contributing factors to an accident without attributing blame or criminal or civil liability to address safety deficiencies and to prevent similar accidents from happening again. And experience has shown that a thorough safety-focused investigation offers the best chance of confirming what really happened and providing the answers that everyone is asking for, particularly for the families who lost so much. We all want answers, and sharing information is a cornerstone of trust. The world deserves to know how and why events unfolded as they did. We commit to providing the best expertise we can, but we must let the investigators do their work. We will only be able to release information specific to the progress and the results of the investigation to the extent determined by the Iranian AAIB. But I can assure you that we will continue to advocate for a full explanation of what happened and why, and we will speak up if we feel those answers aren't coming. Thank you. Bonjour. Tôt le 8 janvier 2020, le vol 752 d'Ukrainian International Airlines s'est écrasé peu après le décollage de l'aéroport international à Téhéran et toutes les 176 personnes à bord ont perdu la vie. Pour les familles et les proches, le monde a basculé du jour au lendemain. Puis, au cours de la fin de semaine, leur monde a de nouveau basculé, lorsque le gouvernement de la République islamique d'Iran a avoué que ses forces armées étaient responsables du tir de missiles et de l'avion abattu. Le Bureau de la sécurité des transports du Canada, le BST, offre ses plus sincères condoléances aux familles et aux proches des personnes qui ont péri dans cette tragédie. Nous sommes en communication directe avec le Bureau d'enquête sur les accidents d'aéronef de la République islamique d'Iran, depuis que nous avons appris que l'accident était survenu. Comme annoncé jeudi dernier, et compte tenu du nombre élevé de Canadiens ayant péri dans l'accident, nous avons confirmé notre rôle comme experts et accepté l'invitation de l'Iran de se rendre sur le site de l'accident, conformément à l'annex 13 à la convention, convention relative à l'aviation la, civile internationale. Deux enquêteurs d'accidents aéronautiques du BST ont quitté le Canada vendredi soir et, au cours de la fin de semaine, ont rejoint des membres de l'équipe consulaire du Canada en Turquie. Ils ont obtenu des visas pour se rendre en Iran et ont quitté la Turquie à destination de Téhéran plus tôt aujourd'hui, en compagnie de membres de l'équipe consulaire du Canada. Le BST enverra également une deuxième équipe d'enquêteurs spécialisée en téléchargement et analyse d'enregistreurs de données de vol d'aéronef, une fois que nous pourrons confirmer où et quand cette activité aura lieu. Ce n'est pas la première fois que nous envoyons nos enquêteurs outre-mer. Le BST est considéré comme étant un chef de file mondial et nous participons à des enquêtes à l'étranger depuis près de 30 ans. Pour ce qui est de cette enquête, je veux être très clair à ce sujet. Nous ne connaissons pas encore l'étendue exacte de notre participation. Toutefois, j'aimerais souligner que jusqu'à présent, le Bureau d'enquête de l'Iran a réagi conformément aux protocoles internationaux. De plus, il y a eu des signes précurseurs qui laissent croire que l'Iran permet au BST d'assumer un rôle plus actif que ce qui est normalement permis. Par exemple, l'Iran a invité le BST à participer au téléchargement et à l'analyse des enregistreurs de données de vol et de conversations dans le poste de pilotage, encore une fois, lorsque nous saurons où et quand cette activité aura lieu. Comme après chaque accident, beaucoup de questions sont posées. Tout le monde veut savoir ce qui s'est passé, et dans ce cas-ci, nous le savons. Tout le monde veut savoir comment et pourquoi ça s'est produit. Nous avons entendu toutes ces questions au lendemain de cette tragédie, et nous nous posons les mêmes questions. On a déjà rapporté que notre rôle est très limité 
en vertu de l'annexe 13 à la Convention relative à l'aviation civile internationale. En tant qu'État d'occurrence, la République islamique d'Iran, et plus particulièrement son bureau d'enquête sur les accidents d'aéronefs, a le droit de diriger l'enquête sur la sécurité. Les rôles des autres États ayant un intérêt particulier sont aussi prescrits de façon similaire. En tant qu'organisme d'enquête principal, le bureau d'enquête de l'Iran est également chargé de diffuser l'information sur les progrès et les conclusions de l'enquête. Nous sommes tenus de respecter cette exigence. Dans cet accident, et particulièrement parce que 57 passagers de l'avion étaient des Canadiens, nous espérons que le BST sera autorisé à mettre davantage de son expertise au service d'une enquête rigoureuse et transparente. En tant qu'organisme d'enquête indépendant, nous allons collaborer avec d'autres autorités d'enquête internationales avec qui nous avons noué des rapports excellents pendant plusieurs années, notamment celles de la France, de la Suède, du Royaume-Uni, des États-Unis ainsi que de l'Ukraine. L'objectif d'une enquête sur la sécurité en vertu de l'annexe 13 de la Convention relative à l'aviation civile internationale est de déterminer tous les facteurs causaux et contributifs à un accident, sans attribuer ni déterminer les responsabilités civiles ou pénales, afin de régler les lacunes de sécurité et d'empêcher que des accidents similaires ne se reproduisent. L'expérience nous montre qu'une enquête rigoureuse axée sur la sécurité offre les meilleures chances de confirmer ce qui s'est réellement passé et de donner les réponses que tout le monde demande, particulièrement pour les familles qui ont tant perdu dans cet accident. Nous voulons obtenir des réponses et nous savons que la diffusion de l'information est fondamentale pour maintenir la confiance. Le monde entier mérite de savoir comment et surtout pourquoi cet événement est survenu. Nous nous engageons à offrir notre expertise, mais nous devons laisser les enquêteurs faire leur travail. L'information sur les progrès et les conclusions de cette enquête que nous pourrons diffuser dépend du bureau d'enquête de l'Iran. Je peux toutefois vous assurer que nous continuons à plaider en faveur d'une explication complète de ce qui s'est passé et pourquoi. De plus, nous nous engageons à nous faire entendre lorsque nous jugeons que les réponses fournies ne sont pas satisfaisantes. Merci. OK, we're going to start with Manon Cornier, uh, Le Devoir, followed by Glenn McGregor, CTV News. On sait que pourquoi l'avion est tombé, vous le dites. Je, je, on ne s'entend pas. On vous Un, entend deux, pas. trois, quatre. Vous ne m'entendez pas? Mais, en tout cas, par, parlez un peu plus fort, c'est juste qu'on a la difficulté à vous entendre. Ah bon, OK, excusez. Euh, on sait donc pourquoi il est tombé, cet avion. Alors, vous dites que maintenant, on va chercher le comment et le pourquoi. Euh, sur quel aspect vous avez vraiment autorité pour faire enquête, entre autres? Est-ce que c'est est, euh, pourquoi on a laissé les vols civils euh, décoller ce matin-là? Mais le vrai cafouillage, il est arrivé au niveau des militaires euh, iraniens. Au Canada, ça nous a pris une commission d'enquête royale pour co connaître le cafouillage de la GRC dans le cas d'Air India. Quels sont vos pouvoirs pour éclaircir ça? Alors, qu'est-ce qu'on dit aujourd'hui? C'est que euh, l'Iran euh, a le, le droit, selon euh, la Convention sur l'aviation civile, à mener l'enquête, parce que c'est l'État où, où s'est passé l'événement. Euh, L'OACI prescrit les rôles des pays, des autres pays impliqués, mais... Euh, ce, ce, cette euh, annexe 13 aussi prescrit comment une enquête devrait, euh, passer, devrait se passer et aussi, et aussi le format du rapport final. Alors, on dit que tout le monde devrait suivre ça, peu importe qui mène l'enquête, mais avec la collaboration des autres parties euh, invitées. Euh, en ce qui concerne euh, la, la sécurité, c'est simplement que euh, les enquêteurs devraient mettre tout sur la table on sait qu'un missile a fait descendre l'avion, mais est-ce que c'était intentionnel? Est-ce que c'était accidentel? Ça, c'est une des questions qu'on peut répondre. Les, les autres questions, c'est pourquoi l'espace a été ouvert, comment ça se fait que les compagnies ont continué. Ça, ça, ça va dans le régime de l'enquête de sécurité aussi. De savoir, de savoir 
Est-ce que c'est intentionnel ou non? Est-ce que ça relève de votre... De votre Est-ce que c'est votre juridiction? Mais c'est la juridiction en dessous de l'OACI de de, du, du pays qui mène l'enquête et de toute l'équipe ensemble, oui. Est-ce qu'on va être en mesure de déterminer ça? Ça reste à savoir, dépendamment euh, comment l'enquête va, va évoluer. A uh, similar question uh, in English. Uh, um, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of mystery why the plane came down now that the Iranians have admit, admitted that there was a, a missile strike. Um, what is it that Canadian investigators could possibly learn that we didn't really know uh, that of substance now about what really caused this, the systemic issues involving this missile being fired? Okay, so... So basically, yes, we do know what has happened. What we don't know is why it happened, right? So the investigation is going to try to understand why it happened. And there's a number of things we need to look into. First of all, we need to kind of establish a sequence of events. So we need to understand how everything happened. We also have, uh, you know, questions on uh, procedures, for example, being followed by the military, you know, and that sort of stuff. Well, we'll, so we'll have to look at that side. As well, why uh, was the airspace uh, not closed, considering, you know, the tensions and what had happened just hours earlier? So we want to know why the Iranian uh, civilian aviation authority, you know, hasn't, uh, why they haven't decided to close the airspace. And then also, uh, even after the accident, why did some uh, operators, companies, still operate uh, out of that region? you know, airplanes flying out and in out of that region. Those are all things we need to look into to understand and prevent. But, uh, but I just want to add one thing, and I want to be clear. This is not a TSB-led investigation. We are trying to be involved with the other countries, the U.S., the U.K., Sweden, France, uh, the Ukraine, as to, uh, to, to answer these questions. This is not a Canadian-led investigation. We do not have that authority. But we're trying to make sure that our role goes beyond what we're currently permitted under ICAO uh, to be able to be part of the team of international countries working under uh, the Iranian uh, Accident Investigation Bureau to be able to answer those questions. Okay, but, but given uh, Canada's limited role as mandated by ICAO, do you think maybe a accident, an air, airplane accident investigation really isn't the right venue to get at the cause of this. Should there not be a broader investigation that looks at the actions of the Iranian military, if it was a military missile, and also the civil aviation authorities there as well, a broader investigation that goes beyond just looking at airplane wreckage and black boxes? Um, I, want to, uh, I want to draw a parallel here with what happened in Ukraine when MH Malaysia Airlines 17, Flight 17, was, was shot down. Uh, that happened in Ukrainian airspace. The wreckage ended up in Ukraine. The Ukrainians elected to uh, delegate, as they're allowed to do under ICAO Annex 13, to the Dutch, the conduct of the investigation. The Dutch Safety Board, our equivalent, conducted a full and thorough investigation and concluded that that aircraft had been brought down by a, a missile Uh, shot uh, from, within, uh, from within Russia. Uh, they then went on to look at all of the other questions, the same questions that are being asked now. Why, uh, given hostilities, were commercial airlines flying through and over uh, Ukraine? Why, um, why wasn't the airspace, why weren't there more restrictions uh, in, in place? And they issued, in collaboration with other international partners, uh, a very, very thorough safety-focused investigation that as a result led to a number of changes uh, under ICAO uh, in airline uh, standard operating procedures. So a safety investigation is absolutely uh, the way to go. That doesn't preclude other investigations from taking place in parallel. For example, again referring back to MH17, in addition, the Dutch judiciary under Dutch law uh, are, in fact, it's, it's currently underway, are conducting a, a criminal investigation. And, uh, and so this, the fact that we would like to do a full safety investigation doesn't preclude other types of investigations with other mandates from being uh, conducted. Okay, next we're going to go to Catherine Levesque, Press Canadienne, followed by David Aiken at Global News. <laughs> Juste quelques questions techniques. Euh, 
vous avez dit, bon, il y, y a un enquêteur du BST qui a été confirmé, euh, qui va aller sur les lieux. Je me demandais quand il va aller sur les lieux de l'incident, puis combien d'enquêteurs vous souhaitez voir euh, au total? Euh, je peux répondre à ça, c'est qu'actuellement, comme on est ici, euh, comme on se parle, il y a deux enquêteurs du BST qui sont dans les airs entre Istanbul et Tehran et ils sont censés arriver euh, d'ici quelques heures au Tehran. Puis ils ont déjà un plan de travail en collaboration avec le bureau d'enquête de l'Iran euh, de, de poursuivre qu'est-ce que l'Iran va nous permettre en ce moment, selon notre rôle. En plus, euh, aussitôt qu'on sait où les enquêteurs, euh, excusez, les enregistreurs vont aller, et je peux euh, répondre à ça euh, plus tard, euh, aussitôt qu'on sait où les enregistreurs de données de vol et de, de, de voix vont aller, euh, on a l'intention d'envoyer une deuxième équipe avec deux autres enquêteurs à cette place-là pour permettre à d'autres équipes au terrain de continuer, si, si possible, leurs, euh, leurs, leurs examens là-bas. Puis, euh, fait on, on a deux équipes de deux, mais le deuxième, on ne peut pas vous donner les détails encore parce qu'on ne on sait pas les détails encore. Il y a un enquêteur qui a été confirmé, non? Non. Okay. Euh, juste pour expliquer, on, quand on parle de, que le BST a le droit de nommer un expert, ça veut dire que ça, c'est le rôle que le BST assume le rôle d'expert versus le rôle de représentant accrédité que, que Natacha peut vous expliquer. Mais en fait, l'expert peut être plus qu'une personne. Puis nous, on a envoyé deux enquêteurs. Il y a deux enquêteurs en route pour terrain. Puis il y a un autre, deux enquêteurs qu'on propose d'envoyer lorsqu'on va savoir où les enregistreurs de données vont être, euh, vont être analysés. C'était juste une précision, une autre question. Comment qualifiez-vous euh, l'attitude de l'Iran jusqu'à maintenant? Euh, je veux dire que, comme je dis, depuis euh, quelques heures après l'accident, on les a contactés directement parce qu'on a déjà une, on a eu déjà eu une collaboration avec eux au, au, avant. On les a contactés euh, très, euh, en donne de moins qu'une heure. Euh, on a eu une réponse euh, qui euh, accusait réception de, du nom de notre enquêteur et qui nous a, ont invité sur le site euh, comme on a le droit de faire. Entre-temps, je peux vous dire qu'on a des communications directes, multiples par journée, et on est en train de, de voir qu'est-ce qu'on peut faire de plus. Alors, par exemple, euh, quand nos enquêteurs vont arriver à, à, à Téhéran, ils vont avoir le droit, non pas juste d'aller voir le site de l'accident, mais aussi d'aller voir les l'épave qui sont en train de reconstruire euh, de ces temps de, de l'étang, je m'excuse, euh, à l'Iran. Et déjà, euh, ça nous donne un peu plus de qu'est-ce qu'on a techniquement droit euh, en dessous de l'OSI. De plus, ils nous ont invités à assister à l'analyse des enregistreurs de données. Ça, normalement, en tant qu'expert, on n'a pas le droit, mais ils nous ont invités euh, à faire ça. Fait que pour nous, c'est des signes euh, précurseurs, des signes encourageants qui vont nous donner... Euh, plus que d'habitude ou plus qu'ils sont euh, obligés de faire, mais jusqu'à quel point, euh, on ne sait pas encore. Ça va venir dans les journées à suivre. David Aiken, Fort Lewis. Uh, thank you and good afternoon. Um, I've got a few. If you have a pen or a pencil, just in case, you might want to note down. I'll reel off my first questions. Um, I wonder if uh, the Canadian TSP officials or investigators will liaise with counterparts in the United States. I understand the United States Transportation Safety Board officials are also going to be involved here. A Boeing official, I understand, is going to be involved. And if you could maybe explain what specific expertise the Boeing representative might bring to this, um, and what information you've already received from Ukrainian investigators. And if you could provide some background on our own investigators, their experience, their names, uh, did, they, did they serve in the military, what's their background? And were they flying commercial or are they flying on Government of Canada aircraft, military aircraft into Tehran? I have a couple more after those. All right. So let me, let me start uh, first of all. Um, when Canada participates in a foreign investigation that is led by another country, uh, and I don't want to get too technical here because I know you've got lots of questions, but essentially, uh, normally the state of occurrence leads the investigation and then other countries, depending on their role, so for example, the state of manufacture of the aircraft, the state of manufacture of the engines, 
the uh, state of registry and the operator of the aircraft all have what we call accredited representative status. Those countries like Canada, like Sweden, like the UK, who had uh, nationals, uh, you know, citizens on that airplane, they have a, a secondary role, which is just they can visit the accident site and they can get factual information released by, uh, by the lead uh, investigation agency. So we have already, over the course uh, of the last few days, through Natasha and through her team, been uh, coordinating and talking and uh, with the representatives that have been designated by the other countries uh, who will be part of the investigation. That is, is a process, that's standard uh, process for us and we're very familiar. Furthermore, I as the, as the chair of the TSB, I have counterparts in the US, the UK, etc. And so uh, on Thursday I spoke directly with all of my counterparts in the involved states. Um, I didn't speak directly to the Ukrainians but uh, Natasha has. Uh, but the point is that I've spoken to all of those uh, people uh, in order to um, try and ensure that we get as much access uh, to the investigation and uh, to reinforce the need to follow the protocols under ICAO Annex 13. So that's, uh, that's very well uh, established. Um, in addition to the invitation from uh, the Iranian AAIB to, uh, uh, to exercise our rights under ICAO Annex 13, the Ukrainians have also invited us. They are accredited representatives, so they have higher rights, and they are, the, of course, as the, the operator and the state of registry of the aircraft. They've invited us to assist them in their investigation, and we've agreed that we will do that. And finally, with respect to our investigators, although normally we would publicly release the name of the lead investigator, the investigator in charge, in this case we have decided um, for privacy and security reasons that we will not release the names of our investigators. Uh, that are en route to Tehran. What I will tell you is that they're very experienced accident investigators and uh, with respect to those who will eventually deploy um, to where the recorders are, these are, are highly uh, recognized and respected um, specialists in the uh, download and, um, and, and analysis of uh, cockpit voice recorders and flight data recorders. Thank you very much. Just a couple other points as well if you wouldn't mind. Um, but, but in terms of things left to investigate, I assume a key question that's outstanding is the Iranians suggest that the plane's uh, direction of flight, it veered off course or something like that, and that may have been a precipitating factor for somebody to cause a missile to launch. Would, presumably that's something an investigation would establish the flight of the aircraft at all times, I assume, until it hit the ground, if you just confirm that. Did the, have you been in touch with Dutch officials? The Prime Minister has, the foreign, foreign Minister has. I wonder if you've talked to Dutch officials for tips on investigations in a situation where a state may or may not be so ready to come forward with all the information. And finally, do you have any indication right now of the condition of the black boxes and uh, whether or not data is likely to be able to come off of them? Thank you. Okay. So, um, first of all, when, and again, I'm going to talk in general terms. I can't talk specifically. I'm going to reiterate TSB is not the lead in this investigation. Our role is evolving and we'll see how far it goes. But I can tell you that uh, when investigators approach an accident scene, everything is on the table. Notwithstanding what people may have said publicly, we don't take that just at face value. We need to co corroborate that validate that information through other means. So there's no doubt that this aircraft was brought down by a surface-to-air missile. That I don't think anybody doubts. Uh, certainly all the evidence suggests that. The issue about whether it was accidental or intentional, that is something that investigators would normally pursue to understand the, the, the sequence of events and the circumstances and the context, especially if it was uh, unintentional, accidental. What were the sequence of events? What was the context that led somebody to make such a tragic uh, mistake uh, or take a, a, such a tragic action. So that's number one. But all the other peripheral, uh, peripheral information, this is not going to be a short investigation regardless of who leads it, uh, regardless of our role. This, this is going to take time to answer all the questions. So that's number one. Uh, number two, yes, I personally um, have been in contact with uh, Dutch safety uh, investigators who are directly involved in the uh, MH17 investigation 
And um, I have, because of our international network that we belong to, which involves all of the international accident, independent accident investigation agencies, uh, absolutely, the Dutch have, uh, have reached out to us as well and offered their assistance. And we believe that the investigation team should absolutely take advantage of, of their expertise and their experience in this area. And finally, what I can tell you about the black boxes, uh, we prefer to call Because this is an example of where if this was happening in Canada, I'd be, I'd be very specific. But I can't because we are restricted in terms of the, the level of information uh, that we can share. And this is an example. And this is perfectly normal operations in, in many ways for us in our role uh, because we're not leading it. But I can assure you that once we know where the recorders are going and where our team is going, we will, we will tell you. Okay, next we're going to Emily Bourgeois Journal de Montreal, followed by Shannon Proudfoot McLean's. Bonjour. Um, je voulais savoir, il uh, y a plusieurs jours qui se sont écoulés depuis la tragédie. Comment uh, pouvez-vous être convaincu que la scène où la tragédie a eu lieu n'a pas été altérée, qu'il n'y a pas eu uh, uh, de. de, de de changements qui ont été faits qui pourraient nuire à l'enquête? Bon, ce qu'on sait présentement, c'est sûr que la, la, la scène d'accident est importante. Euh, c'est une des, des choses où on prend beaucoup d'informations lorsqu'on se déploie. Euh, par contre, aussi, faut, euh, ben, on ne on connaît pas vraiment les détails à ce moment-ci. Fait que l'équipe n'est pas encore sur les lieux. C'est certain qu'ils vont aller sur les lieux de l'accident, puis ils vont aller vérifier ce qu'il ce qu y a là. Mais aussi, euh, on sait que l'épave a été bougée dans un hangar... Euh, pas loin du site de l'accident. Donc, euh, on a aussi euh, reçu la confirmation euh, du, de l'équipe euh, d'enquête de l'Iran qu'on allait pouvoir accéder à ce hangar-là. Il faut comprendre que dans le contexte euh, de cet accident-là, c'est survenu dans un endroit très peuplé. C'est extrêmement difficile de garder le contrôle d'une zone, surtout considérant que cette zone-là était très grande. Donc, euh, il, est, il, y a, il, y a des, euh, il y a des bons défis à ce niveau-là. Puis je pense qu'à ce moment-là, euh, l'équipe de l'Iran a pris la décision de bouger euh, l'épave le plus possible dans un hangar à proximité. Boîte noire, euh, vous avez mentionné qu'elles étaient endommagées. Euh, quelle information de ce qu'on sait il serait quand même possible d'avoir euh, de ces boîtes noires-là? Euh, pour l'instant, je ne veux pas répondre parce qu'honnêtement, on ne sait pas. Euh, parce qu'on ne les a pas vus, euh, on, on ne sait pas jusqu'à quel point qu'ils qu sont endommagés. On sait juste que ça présente des défis techniques euh, pour, euh, pour le, le, le bureau d'enquête euh, à l'Iran de, de sortir les données et les analyser. Et c'est pour ça qu'il y a plusieurs pays, entre autres nous autres, euh, qui essaient de leur donner l'assistance euh, là-dessus, euh, parce que tout le monde a intérêt à voir qu ce qui est dans les... Euh, dans ces enregistreurs. You, you said that a, a safety investigation is the way to go at this point, but that does not preclude other types of investigations in the future. What, can you tell us what would be the mechanism for making a different type of investigation go ahead and what leverage would Canada have to push for that if that was something they wanted? I think that that's really for, uh, for others to determine. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, in the case of MH17, the, uh, the Dutch Safety Board did a fulsome safety investigation and determined uh, that, in fact, that aircraft had been downed by a missile, uh, and then looked at all of the other uh, civilian aviation issues. And, um, but at the same time, because of their uh, legal jurisdiction in, in uh, the Netherlands, Uh, they, the, juris, the, the ju uh, justice side opened a, a separate uh, a parallel investigation. So I don't know. I, I know that there's a lot of uh, discussions being uh, taken uh, by others in the government with respect to what uh, such an investigation might look like. For, for us, our mandate is to conduct a safety investigation in accordance with ICAO Annex 13, and that's what we're focused on stressed in French and English that you don't yet know what the exact role of TSB investigators will be here, that that's still to be determined or taking shape. Is that unusual at this point after a crash, however many days we are at here? 
um, that that would still be becoming clear, or is that a usual timeline for this sort of thing? I, I mean, I understand the tiers of access and involvement you're saying we get depending on which nation we're talking about, but can you compare this, this timeline for the clarity of the TSB's role to what would be usual? So I can say that in most investigations that we've been involved in, foreign investigations, we've played a variety of roles. We have led some investigations that happen in other countries because we've been asked to lead them by that country. Uh, we have participated as accredited representatives, so the equivalent of what the U.S., the Ukraine, and France will be in this investigation. Uh, and the only other accident I can compare this to is Ethiopian Airlines, where again, we did not have any status as an accredited representative. We had expert status, uh, but in that case, we did not get any additional uh, rights or any additional access to the investigation uh, at that time. Uh, so in this case, already we're seeing a willingness and an openness on the part of the Iranian AAIB to bring us closer in, to, you know, to, to give us more access than we would normally have, uh, have under ICAO. And it remains to be seen uh, how that's going to evolve in the future, uh, given the, the circumstances, because it really is, is up to them. What I will, will say to you is that we are working very hard to build trust daily in order for us to be brought in, in recognition of our expertise, our independence, and our uh, willingness to, um, to act within ICAO but with an expanded role. Okay, we're going to go to Joel Denis Bellavance La Presse and then Ashley Burke, CBC News. Oui, bonjour. Euh, à la lumière des conversations que vous avez eues avec vos avis, vos vis -à -vis iraniens et aussi à la lumière du comportement des autorités iraniennes qui ont nié au départ qu'ils avaient joué un rôle dans l'accident, dans quelle mesure êtes-vous optimiste que vous allez obtenir toutes les réponses aux questions, aux nombreuses questions que vous posez, que les Canadiens se posent sur les circonstances entourant cette tragédie? Je peux, je peux commencer. Euh, bon, notre relation présentement avec le bureau d'enquête de l'Iran est positif. On a eu des communications rapides de leur part. Euh, ils nous ont envoyé jusqu'à date la notification qu'ils devaient nous envoyer d'ICAO. Euh, ils ont aussi euh, confirmé euh, le lorsqu'on a lorsqu'on a euh, voyons. Lorsqu'on a choisi notre expert, là, ils nous ont confirmé que tout était correct avec ça. Ils nous ont envoyé un, un rapport préliminaire également euh, de leur enquête. Euh, À chaque fois que j'ai été en mesure de, 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 de les contacter, ça a toujours été, ils ont toujours été très ouverts à notre participation aussi, sans nécessairement aller plus loin puis nous laisser euh, nous donner vraiment un rôle euh, clair. Donc ça, ça reste encore à être discuté avec eux. Là, on a deux enquêteurs en route présentement. Ils devraient arriver très bientôt. Ça, ça va nous donner un un bon coup de main. Fait qu'ils vont être sur les lieux. Il y a une rencontre d'organiser demain avec l'équipe d'enquête de l'Iran. Puis à ce moment-là, je pense qu'on va être capable d'avoir euh, une meilleure idée de, de notre implication dans l'enquête. Et pour assurer les réponses que vous souhaitez avoir, évidemment. Exactement. Euh, Est-ce qu'il y a des précédents euh, auxquels euh, le Bureau de sécurité des transports a participé, comparable à ce, que, ce à quoi vous êtes euh, sur le point de participer, là? Euh, d'autres événements tragiques auxquels le BST était associé pour enquêter de la même ampleur que ce qu'on voit en ce moment qu'on a vu? Euh, quand on parle des accidents d'avion, oui, on a participé à plusieurs accidents, à plusieurs enquêtes majeures dans les autres pays euh, à travers le monde. Mais euh, de cette ampleur-là où on parle d'un avion qui s'est fait descendre par un missile, non, on n'a pas une expérience euh, directe. Euh, mais par contre, on a déjà collaboré avec euh, l'Iran jusqu'à un certain point, il y a deux ans, quand un avion euh, fabriqué au Canada euh, a eu un accident mortel euh, en Iran. Et alors, on avait déjà établi une relation de travail. Mais je pense que dans ce cas-ci, euh, il reste à savoir pas juste comment le Canada va, va intervenir, mais comment les autres pays aussi vont, vont faire ça euh, dans ce cette, cette contexte. Mais je veux juste vous... vous Vous avisez, vous confirmez qu'on fait tout, tout notre possible pour bâtir la confiance de tous les partis euh, de façon à avoir euh, les réponses. Mais euh, on ne sait pas qu ce qui va arriver euh, demain ou après-demain ou la semaine prochaine, puis jusqu'à quel point on va être capable d'aller. Alors, c'est pour ça qu'on dit, à date, on a des, des bons signes. Est-ce que ça va continuer? On ne sait pas. Puis est-ce qu'ils vont répondre aux questions que tout le monde pose? On ne sait pas. Mais on veut tous travailler dans cette direction-là. 
Uh, can you re reiterate what additional access you've been granted by Iran, and ideally what other access you'd like, and what specific expertise that you have in Canada that you want to bring to this investigation? All right. So, um, and again, I, I'm answering this in the perspective that we are not leading the investigation. We are part of an international team, and the the different countries bring different uh, different strengths uh, to that uh, experience. So I think, first of all, normally we are limited to visiting the accident site, getting information that has been factual information that's been released by the state, and getting a copy of the final report. That's that's what our role entitles to it now. The additional things that we're getting access to is now that the wreckage has been moved to another uh, venue than the site, we're being given the opportunity to view and examine the wreckage. Uh, secondly, we're being asked to provide technical expertise regarding the download and analysis of the recorders, and we're being invited to attend the download and analysis of, reporters, of recorders, which is not something to which we would normally have access. At this point in time, those are the extra, extra steps that we've been allowed to uh, participate in. Now, um, sorry, if I could just get back to the second part of your question. Is what specific expertise does Canada oh, right. have that you want to bring to the site and what kind of access? So, uh, I mean, we have, uh, we have uh, very specific expertise, obviously, in the download and the analysis of, of recorders. Uh, we have conducted a number of major investigations. Okay. And in fact, um, when Swiss Air crashed off the coast of, of Peggy's Cove in 1998 and was smashed tragically into a million pieces, uh, it was the TSB that recovered and reconstructed that aircraft and did a very extensive, um, a very extensive analysis of, of that accident, what caused it, and uh, issued 23 recommendations which led to numerous changes in, uh, in the design of, of flight protection. Um, where we don't have direct expertise is in the downing of civilian aircraft by military uh, weapons, but there are other countries like the Dutch who we hope will be invited to participate and provide advice to the larger investigation team. But we've done thousands of, of aircraft uh, investigations. We're recognized as a world leader, and if you look at our investigations, you'll see that not only do we look at the technical factors and the operational, but we also look at the organizational factors, the systemic factors, the context, why, including our own regulator and regulatory oversight. So we, we bring uh, a wide um, variety of expertise to uh, an investigation team and will complement the, the expertise that other countries can bring. About wanting justice and accountability for the families who's lo who lost loved ones in this crash. Um, what this safety investigation, how could it play into a separate criminal investigation if there is one? Like, for example, you talked about MH17. Did they tell you if any of that work that those safety investigators did did play into the criminal investigation too? So I can only tell you how it works in Canada because our legislation in Canada is very clear. Certain information is protected. Uh, recorders, um, cockpit voice recorders, for example, are protected. Witness statements are protected under our Act, and our reports are not admissible in court because the function of the board is to uh, is to find out what happened and why, but we can't attribute blame or determine civil or criminal responsibility. So we know that in any accident, and, and you look at any accident that's happened in Canada, very often there's civil or criminal litigation that goes on after the fact, but that's done separately and. We don't, I mean, we know prosecutors and defenders read our reports, and that may inform the way they're going to go, but that's totally separate from us. Uh, so how it's going to work in this case, because there are so many international jurisdictions that are applicable, uh, I, I can't say. You'd, you'd really have to ask that <coughs> from, uh, you know, the Justice Department. And I, But I know the jurisdictions vary around the world. Uh, but I know in the case of the Dutch, the safety board did the investigation, and then their judicial system, using their laws, pursued criminal um, uh, investigation against uh, individuals. And that is, is still underway, by the way. The safety investigation is completed, the reports are out, but the, the criminal, uh, the judicial process in, in Holland is still underway as we speak. 
Okay, we're going to Helene Bazzetti Le Devoir next, uh, followed by Allison Lampert, Reuters. Oui, en fait, euh, la plupart de mes questions ont été répondues déjà, mais juste euh, une petite précision, ça a été long avant d'obtenir les visas pour nos deux premiers enquêteurs. Vous avez parlé de deux enquêteurs supplémentaires qui pourraient aller écouter les boîtes. Est-ce que vous avez la garantie du régime iranien que vous aurez les visas rapidement pour euh, aller là aussi? Um, à date, euh, on, on a été très, très bien euh, supportés par les... Euh, euh, par le département d'affaires euh, à l'étranger, euh, au, au Canada, je parle, puis ils ont tout fait euh, en collaboration avec euh, les gens de l'Iran de façon à avoir les visas au soc possible. Alors, euh, on va voir. Ça se peut que nos autres enquêteurs vont en Iran. Ça se peut aussi qu'ils vont ailleurs. Fait on, on, il faut savoir, il faut attendre pour voir où ce qu'ils vont aller. Mais à date, euh, je pense qu'ils ont travaillé euh, assez rapidement. Euh, en tout cas, c'est aussi rapidement qu'il pouvait dans les circonstances pour avoir les, les visas. Can you talk about the larger role that Iran is inviting Canada to play under Annex 13? How much faith, though, do you have in the ability to get the answers you want in an Iran-led investigation, especially given that the country previously lied about the cause of the crash? And can you just give any specifics? I know you were asked about this before, but do you have any specific insight? or independent insight, if I can say, into whether the plane veered off course, as the Iranians have claimed? Uh, I'm going to answer that question first. We don't have any independent information regarding the path, the flight path of the aircraft, so I'm not going to comment one way or the other. But that is absolutely one of the questions that the investigators, and I, when I, the, the broad investigation team would certainly look at, because we need, uh, the information we need to collect is on the recorders. It's in the wreckage. It's in the air traffic control radar and communications. What, what was the standard flight plan? What, was, what route did the plane follow versus the standard flight plan? All of those questions are, are on the table. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're striving to build trust and build a working relationship with um, the, Iran, uh, the Iranian uh, Accident Investigation Bureau. We already have well-established um, uh, relationships with the other uh, investigators and the other investigation authorities. And I think when all of us gather in one place, uh, when it comes time to download and analyze the recorders, uh, that is going to be a, a great opportunity to scope out the roles of various countries and uh, the scope of the investigation. And I'm uh, cautiously optimistic. but. It remains to be seen, you know, but I'm, I'm optimistic that at least things are moving in that direction. But again, we'll, we'll have to see, because clearly some of these questions are going to be very uncomfortable for the country uh, to answer. But we hope that safety will, this, the, 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 the purpose of safety investigations will override those. And the fact that everybody's acting in accordance with ICAO Annex 13, uh, that that will help to, um, help to lead us in that direction. You referenced the Dutch Safety Board report in the wake of MH17. Some of their recommendations from 2015 did lead to improvements, but others, like the creation of that ICAO conflict zone repository, failed to really materialize. Do you think the world went far enough after MH17 to prevent this type of tragedy from happening? I guess if you look at the reality of the situation, the answer is no. And um, I have recently, re well, certainly in the, in the recent days, reviewed their, the Dutch Safety Board's investigation report. So there were two reports. There was the investigation report on the downing of MH17, and then there was a follow-up report specifically with respect to flying in conflict zones, which the Dutch did in order to determine um, if their recommendations had been implemented and whether there were any gaps. And I, I don't normally do this, and I want to make it clear what I'm about to say Please do not attribute this to me. Uh, this is the Dutch Safety Board report, which you can all access. But there was one sentence that stuck out for me, and I think certainly uh, shows that more needs to be done. And this is from the Dutch report, and I quote, practice shows that states in which there is ongoing armed conflict will not implement restrictions for their airspace on their own initiative. Now, this is after they've already acknowledged all the actions that have been taken. I've finished my quote. That's after they've acknowledged all the, the uh, steps that have been taken by ICAO, by states, by airline operators. But they recognize when this report was issued 
that there were still potential gaps. And unfortunately, we're seeing the results of that. So where that's going to lead in the future, I can't say, but it's clear evidence that more needs to be done when you're dealing with, uh, with military activities uh, versus civilian operations. Okay, we're going to go to Christian Noel, Radio Canada, followed by Campbell Clark, Globe and Mail. Bonjour, Christian Noël ici. Um, Ce n'est pas un accident d'avion ordinaire, ça implique un missile. À, dans, à quel point ça va être un défi pour le BST d'analyser les données pour faire enquête là-dessus? Deuxièmement, ça implique des militaires. Allez-vous avoir accès aux militaires et aux réponses des militaires? Et est-ce que le contexte géopolitique fait partie de votre analyse du pourquoi tout ça est arrivé? Euh, C'est certain que le, le contexte euh, géopolitique... Euh, joue un rôle ici qui, est, euh, qui va rendre une enquête de sécurité euh, très euh, complexe. Euh, et à savoir si on va avoir accès euh, aux données, je ne sais pas. Mais, mais je veux encore euh, clarifier l'affaire. C'est l'enquête internationale menée par l'Iran, mais avec la participation du Canada et des autres euh, euh, pays, devrait définitivement poursuivre Jusqu'à quel point on va être capable d'aller, il, il reste à confirmer. Et vous allez pouvoir voir le lieu, ne pas nécessairement faire enquête, pas pouvoir assister à l'analyse, ne pas nécessairement faire enquête. Pardon, vous allez pouvoir aussi regarder l'épave, pas nécessairement faire enquête. Donc, quel coup d'effrange vous avez pour avoir les réponses que les Canadiens demandent et comment pouvez-vous assurer que les Canadiens auront vraiment toutes les réponses qu'ils demandent, si vous n'avez pas... Mais la possibilité d'avoir de, des coups d'effranche. C'est certain qu'il y a plusieurs pays impliqués ici, entre autres, euh, à part l'Iran, évidemment, il y a l'Ukraine, il y a les États-Unis, il y a le, la France, entre autres, qui ont euh, un statut où ils peuvent euh, participer euh, de façon euh, plus évoluée dans l'enquête. Dans Et je pense que Natacha pourrait vous préciser un peu qu'est-ce que de plus, qu'est-ce qu'ils peuvent faire. Et euh, on a été demandé, entre autres, par l'Ukraine euh, à leur assister dans l'enquête. Alors, ils ont le droit de nous demander ça. On peut être comme euh, conseiller. Euh, donc, euh, ce n'est pas le même statut que si on était, qu'on a, que eux y ont. Mais euh, en tout cas, on va faire notre possible. Parce que j'ai l'impression que ça va être surtout un rôle passif. Um, Je ne suis pas prête à à dire ça, euh, s'il vous plaît, comprendre qu'il y a beaucoup de discussions en arrière, mais il faut bâtir la confiance. Vous avez dit que le rôle des investigateurs canadiens sera be limité à certaines choses, et ils semblent être plus de ce qui s'est passé dans la variété, les aspects techniques, les aspects de flight recorders. Les plus grandes questions que vous avez parlé plus tard, sur pourquoi ça s'est passé, la sequence d'événements dans le militaire, why the airspace was not closed and so on. These involve dealing with military sources, records, government sources and records. You don't necessarily, even with your wider role, have access to that. The Ira are the Iranians, as the state of occurrence and the lead investigator, the only people who will be asking questions of their military, asking questions of their government, or do those other international investigators, the Americans, the Ukrainians, the French, will they have a role in that? Well, I think that remains to be determined. Uh, maybe, uh, Natasha, you could just uh, go through a few of the, um, the rights of accredited representatives, which are definitely superior to what uh, the role of an expert plays. So, uh, so basically, to become an accredited representative, you have to be either the state of registry, the state of operator, state of design, or state of manufacture, or have been invited by uh, the country who's leading the investigation to, to act as an, ac, uh, an accredited representative. Uh, ac, ac reps, as we call them, uh, they have actually, um, they can participate, they are entitled to participate in all aspects of an investigation under the control of the investigator in charge, right? So the difference with the expert is, is quite a bit, actually. So an expert, on the other hand, would be allowed to visit the scene of the accident, would be allowed to access uh, relevant and factual information that has been publicly released by the, by the state conducting the investigation and get a copy of the final report. 
So that's basically the range. So you have ACT reps on one side that are allowed to participate fully into the investigation, whereas in, on the other side you have the expert who is quite limited. However, uh, we have, like I said, like we said earlier, we have been in contact with the uh, Iran uh, investigation bureau, and uh, we are seeing some positive uh, outcome out of that. So. They have invited us to the download of the recorders. This is above and beyond what Annex 13 allows us to do. They have also allowed us to uh, not only visit the site, but go to the wreckage and examine the wreckage, which is also above and beyond uh, what the Annex 13 allows us to do. So we're confident, cautiously confident, but confident that we will uh, continue. We know we will continue to work really hard uh, to, to get more accesses, and we're confident that so it might be. About the TSB's role in this investigation, but about the international mm -hmm. participation, because I think most of us would consider that the only form of oversight for the Iranian yeah. investigators. And so what I want to know is, will those investigators be involved in talking to Iranian military officials? Do, when you say full participation, is are they allowed in that? Because usually foreign okay. militaries okay. don't invite people in. Yeah, so it's, um, and I'll give you the parallel in Canada. In Canada, when other uh, countries participate in a Canadian investigation uh, because of uh, foreign aircraft registry, foreign aircraft design, etc., we in Canada do not allow them to participate in the interviews because our legislation prohibits and, and protects those interviews. I don't know what the appropriate legislation, statute, protocols are in Iran. So, no, I, we can't answer whether they would permit uh, other countries to participate in the interviews. But I tell you, we don't. So, so I guess the question will be, you know, how, how far are they going to allow, as the lead agency, how far are they going to allow? ICAO, the International Civil Aviation Organization, uh, may be able to help play a role here. We'll, we'll see. Um, but if we don't get those kind of answers, then, then others will have to look at other mechanisms to get there. Rely on the information provided to them by the Iranian lead investigator. Unless the Iranians allow uh, people to participate directly in the interviews, but again, as I said, that's up to them to decide, and that's contingent on what their uh, protocols and procedures are in in Iran. Okay, we're just going to take a quick break from the room to see if there's anyone on the line. Um, Jacob, is there? Uh, yes, thank you. Please press star 1 on your telephone keypad at this time if you have a question. N'hésitez pas à appuyer sur étoile 1 pour toute question. Once again, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad if you have a question. Please appuyer sur étoile 1 si vous avez une question. Our first question comes from uh, Stephen Chase from the Global Mail. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Première question via Stephen Chase, the Global Mail. Yes, uh, good afternoon. I just wanted to see if you could help us summarize Canada's current role. It sounds like it's basically observer status. I've listened to the entire press conference. I've heard the caveats about being allowed to examine the wreckage and being allowed to be present during the download of data. but. Is it basically observer status right now? Um, we don't use the term observer in that context. Our role is expert plus. Expert plus the ability to examine the wreckage. Expert plus the ability to participate in the download uh, and analysis of the recordings. Other countries who will be more actively involved in the investigation, uh, who will be allowed to be more actively involved in the investigation, have indicated to us that they will ask for our assistance as advisors in their participation. Beyond that, we can't say. It will depend on what happens in the coming days. We are, con and, and I'm sure you're well aware that many uh, levels of our government are pushing for us to play a more active role. But if that, how that will roll out, uh, we can't say at this point. Uh, but we're certainly uh, advocating and we're trying to maintain a positive working relationship with the AIB in Iran so that they have confidence in us that uh, they can rely on us, um, one, in terms of bringing expertise to the or but also in terms of not sharing information publicly at this point um, that we're not entitled to, to release. Okay. Thank you. 
there are no further questions registered at this time, il n'y a plus de questions. Okay, thank you. Um, we're going to go to Michelle Lamarche, TVA next, and then Jolson Lim, iPolitics. Merci beaucoup. Vous avez répondu presque à tous mes deux petites questions rapides en terminant. Quel est votre degré d'optimisme, de confiance qu'à la fin de l'exercice, les Canadiens vont savoir si le missile a été envoyé intentionnellement ou non? C'est une question à, auquel il est très, à laquelle il est très difficile à répondre. Euh, je veux dire, euh, je ne sais pas c'est quoi le terme en français, « cautiously optimistic », mais honnêtement, là, je suis aussi réaliste. Alors, je pense qu'à fur et à mesure qu'on va interagir directement avec le bureau d'enquête de l'Iran, on va être en meilleure euh, posture pour répondre euh, à savoir jusqu'à où ils vont aller avec l'enquête, puis c'est quoi la, notre rôle, c'est qu'est-ce qu'ils vont nous permettre à faire à l'espace aérien en zone de conflit, est-ce qu'à la fin de l'exercice, il faudra que les règles soient resserrées, à votre avis? Je me suis je pas compris que les règles soient resserrées. L'espace aérien oh. en zone de conflit, est-ce qu'on devra changer les règles? Mais, mais compte tenu qu'on n'a pas, euh, en fin de compte, mis en œuvre toutes les recommandations euh, du rapport du MH17, euh, c'est clair qu'il y a d'autres choses à faire pour minimiser, pour mitiger le risque d'un tel incident, d'un accident. Um, how much time will T, uh, TSB investigators have uh, to see the accident site as well as the wreckage? I'm just trying to get a sense of the quality of access uh, that you'll have to the physical evidence there. Um, So far, okay, so, so far we have, um, uh, the plans are that we're going to meet up with the uh, Accident Investigation uh, Bureau of Iran in uh, tomorrow, their time, uh, and we have at least a couple of days. Um, but, you know, again, our investigators are going to have to, uh, uh, have to go with whatever they're allowed to do when they're, while they're on site. And then after that, we'll have to see. Uh, what, what happens. So we're kind of going day by day right now uh, in terms of how long they're going to be there, what they're going to be able to do, and when they're going to come out of there. Uh, there are limitations, as you can appreciate, on their visas, but what we understand that they can be extended if required. But for now, we're just sort of looking at a 48-hour window, and then we'll, uh, we'll build on that. Um, what, I, what I can tell you is that you know, we're, we're going to stay here and, and answer your questions as the best we can for as long as we can. But after this, um, we really don't have any new information to add. And when we do have more information that we can add, we will continue to issue statements, as we've been doing for the last uh, few days, uh, and update you on, on sort of what's happening. But again, I, I caution you, and, and not just the media, but also the families, that we can only share with you a certain amount of information. We have more information than we can share. So we want to respect the boundaries uh, laid out for us in ICAO Annex 13. But we will update you as, as we can. Okay, we're going to Jordan Press, CP, and then Ken Pohl, Canadian Skies. Good afternoon. Thanks so much for all your time. There were, there's one thing I want to pick up on. You talked about building trust with the Iranians. Can you just describe <laughs> the challenges in doing that and exactly what you have done to try to build that trust? Um, As I said, we, we have normal, uh, long-standing uh, relationships with other accident investigation agencies that we've built up over years and years and years. We have our own uh, association of independent accident investigation uh, safety boards uh, with uh, 17 countries that are represented. And we meet at least once a year, but in between we have regular communications. We, we don't have the same level of interaction uh, with Iran only because We'd only have interaction with them if a Canadian aircraft or a Canadian product was involved, a Canadian operator was involved, or in this case, there were Canadian casualties. So we haven't had the opportunity to build as, as close a working relationship over the years, although we did, we did uh, do an investigation. We've also been, uh, to, some, to, to some extent, limited, given the, the current uh, environment and the restrictions on uh, you know, emb the embargo and trade and so on. So, uh, so we are building it, and we're building it by being, um, by being consistent with ICAO Annex, 
by regular communications, uh, both written and, and, and verbal, uh, and by being very careful in, in what kind of information we release uh, at this time. So that's how we're building trust. And as I said, I think once uh, all of the countries involved, including Iran, uh, uh, the Accident Investigation Bureau, and please understand when I say Iran, I'm, all, or, uh, I, I'm always uh, uh, talking about the, the Accident Investigation Bureau. Uh, I think we'll have a better idea then uh, in the coming days uh, to, to determine uh, how much farther our working relationship is going to go, what's going to be the scope of the investigation, but we will still be limited in terms of what we can say publicly. Um, it'll be up to uh, the Iranians to, to determine that. Follow up. You said off the bat that you wanted a full, full investigation transparent. And if you didn't feel that that was what the public and the families were getting, that you'd be willing to speak up, yes. what does that look like, speaking up? Um, it, it could look like a variety of ways. Uh, and it may not come from us, by the way. It may come from other countries that are more active in the investigation than we are. It could be that the lines of inquiry that um, we would normally pursue are not being pursued. It could be that the information which is coming out, uh, that we have credible facts to indicate that it's not, um, uh, it's not complete or it's, or it's misleading. Uh, but I really hope that's not where, I mean, everything that we've been seeing so far is, is giving us some um, optimism that this is, is heading and can be managed uh, in the context of a, a, t of a, a foreign accident investigation under ICAO's uh, protocols. A couple of questions. I'll give you a yes or no one first. Uh, have you received any communication from the Ukrainians about their initial conclusions as to the uh, the cause of the crash? Not directly. Not directly. Um, the flight data recorder, cockpit voice recorder, we know the bill year of the airplane. Do you know the generation of those recorders? Uh, I don't have those uh, specific uh, details with me at this point. Okay. And uh, how, how long are the initial visas for? Um, it's my understanding, and this is general, I mean, that question really should probably go to Global Affairs, but my understanding is that generally it's about 14 days in country over a 30-day period, but that they can be extended uh, on site. But that's for everybody, that's not just for us. Ashley, do you, do you have a follow-up? Yeah. Okay, Ashley Burke, CBC. We're, do you, sorry, we're wrapping up soon, unless anyone has follows, just please signal and then we'll... Uh, emotionally, how do you feel that 57 Canadians lost their lives and Canada is playing a smaller, a much smaller role in this investigation? Uh, I can say that we're horrified, shocked and saddened and that we know we have expertise that we can bring to this investigation along with our international partners that can help get the answers that the families deserve and that the public wants as well. You said when you spoke at the beginning that um, if Iran isn't being forthcoming with information, that you would, you would push them on that. What exactly can you do? What power do you have? It's not a question of power. It's, uh, you know, through international investigations, um, uh, I'll say a couple of things here. First of all, the, the team, the investigative team, which is composed of multiple nationalities, they work as a team. Uh, very often, the international boundaries are disappear. You got a bunch of people who are professional, who are dedicated, who are experts, and who want to get find out what happened. And they work together collaboratively. Um, but it obviously also depends on the lead investigation agency in terms of their, you know, their abilities and also their willingness. But I, I can tell you that under ICAO Annex 13, focus safety investigations, uh, the experience that we've had to date, and with this one remains to be seen, is everybody wants to work together. Everybody wants to get the answers, even though. Um, others, even though we don't infer blame, and others may infer blame. Okay, we'll go to uh, Glenn next. Just, just to follow on, on that point, if, uh, if the final report is at odds with the observations of the Canadians or any other countries involved, is there any mechanism to present a dissenting opinion or um, to uh, object to the, to the ultimate conclusion of the report? Um, there may be, but I don't know specifically uh, what it would be, so that's something we'd have to follow up on. Okay, and uh, just uh, behind there, Joel Denis. Vous avez mentionné que l'enquête risque d'être longue. Est-ce que vous avez une idée en tête du 
temps que ça pourrait durer, tout ça? Non, c'est sûr que ça dépend de, des ressources qui sont mises sur l'enquête, ça dépend de, des lignes d'enquête, ça dépend d'une une série de facteurs. Je pense au niveau, euh, je ne me rappelle pas exactement combien de temps les, euh, les Hollandais ont, ont, ont pris pour euh, ce rapport-là. Je pense que c'était autour de un ou deux ans. Là. Mais euh, normalement, et, et si on regarde Swiss Air, euh, que le Canada a fait, ça a pris euh, quasiment cinq ans. Mais c'est... Puis nous, on essaie, je pense, euh, au niveau de l'OSI, normalement, le norme, c'est un an. Mais ça dépend de la complexité de l'enquête. Puis on ne veut pas écourter une enquête juste pour répondre à une échéance alors qu'il manque encore des, des informations. And I just, I want to come back, if I may, to the other question, and then if you have a, si vous avez une un question suivie. You know, again, I think we have to be clear. Um, what I'm trying to tell you is that if, if we are involved in the investigation, and, and we're, we're not going to endorse a report if we believe that there are serious problems with the report uh, because it's either incomplete or inaccurate or misleading. And I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm just saying it doesn't matter who's leading the investigation. You know, when we, involve, when we get involved, we, we do as much as we can in partnership with the others to make sure it's complete, it's thorough, it's accurate, and it answers the questions. Okay? But that's how we want to work. Unless you have anything else to add, I think we'll, we'll end it there. Uh, that's fine. I just, I guess the two key messages are uh, Canada's role is evolving. It remains to be seen how far we're going to be able to go. And please understand, and, and we, we're, we're asking the families to understand that we can only release information uh, under certain constraints. And we need to respect that in order to uh, maintain the confidence of our partners in this international effort. Thank you. Andrew Thompson with you again, watching the Transportation Safety Board of Canada give an update on its role. In